Good morning, happy Sabbath, good evening from wherever you're watching us from. We are so happy that you're joining us today again for our lesson study number 12. And like we said last week, we are doing the second part of the seal of God, mark of the beast, and the mark of the beast, the seal of God and the mark of the beast. Uh, I'm still joined by my wonderful panel, but before they say hi to us or we go any further, I'll ask that Zafeth, please, to open for us with a word of prayer. Thank you. Mm. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks uh, for the opportunity you've given us as panelists to come together to discuss uh, this issue, part two of the seal of God and the mark of the beast. I thank you for the many, many times uh, you've given us blessings for the last 11 lessons. This 12th lesson, may you give us understanding and insight that we may uh, discuss and speak not our words, but words that come from above and be with all the hearers of this message as well. I thank you that you've had this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. So I just ask that we say hi to the viewer, starting from you, Jess. Praise God. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for joining us today. My name is Jess Rono. Karibu Sana. Yes. Uh, praise God. My name is Jafet Rono. Karibu Jafet. My name is Otsongo Rafael Yamiso. I'm glad to be here and uh, welcome, dear viewer. Karibu Sana. I'm Rumona Apio. Uh, we'll now go to the study. The seal of God and mark of the beast. This is the second part. Uh, I remember just asking us to be a bit keen last time so that this also this study becomes a bit easier for us to understand. I'm not saying that it will be hard, but uh, I'm just saying that so that we can be able to understand better. Yeah. So our memory text comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 2 and 3. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. That's from the New King James Version. And we, the lesson writer just introduces us to and takes us bus, back to the world dances in AD 1488. They were brutally murdered by the Roman church, the Roman church for their faith. They had the faith of Jesus. Theirs was steadfast and they just wanted to do the things that pleases the Lord. And as you're going to see, history is going to repeat them itself again. Through our study, you're going to learn that. And that was not just the first time they were persecuted and, ki and brutally murdered. Another wave of persecution again happened in the 17th century. By, it was led by the Duke of Savoy. He sent an army of 8,000 in their territory and demanded that the local populace quarter his troops in their home. And on 24th April 1655, there was a massacre and a death toll of about 4,000 people died. And this is not something we can, we can just take lightly. We cannot rejoice over such murders. These were people who trusted in the Lord. These were people who just wanted to live for the Lord as they were required. And through this lesson, we are going to see the seal of God the consequences that happen. You know, the angel is saying that do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Now, what happens to the rest of them that are not the servants of God? Who are they? What seal are they going to receive? So that is what you are going to delve on. And I remember last week there was a question. Some, one of us asked, uh, what part of the mark of the beast are we at? So this study is going to explain to us that part. So do not um, do not be afraid. We are going to we are going to learn that. So Zafeth, the Sunday part, the deadly wound, just help us to understand the years, the twelve sixty prophetic days, as in Revelation chapter thirteen verse five, Revelation twelve verse six and verse 14, and then Daniel 7.25. Just help us understand what are we talking about when you talk about the deadly wound and the prophetic days, 1,260. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 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 as you have just uh, noted, uh, there is a particular period of time mm. 
mm-hmm. that occurs uh, not just these four times. In mm-hmm. fact, it occurs seven times mm-hmm. throughout the prophecies, the mm-hmm. books of Daniel and mm-hmm. Revelation. Mm-hmm. And in the four of them, I would like us to read every single one of them so that we understand mm-hmm. and we see uh, how this, this time period is captured and how it is connected with the power that is called the beast power. Mm-hmm. Uh, Revelation chapter 13 verse 5 tells us, And there was given unto him, this power that is blasphemous, that persecutes God's people. There was given unto him uh, mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue for 40 and 2 months. Mm-hmm. So 42 months. Mm-hmm. Just keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Then Revelation chapter 12 verse 6. We are told, and the woman fled into the wilderness. And if you recall from our past studies, this woman is actually a representation of the church. Mm-hmm. God's people. Mm-hmm. So this woman, the church, fled into to the wilderness where she had a place prepared of God that she sh- that, that he should f- that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and sixty days mm. now for those of us who are keen and those of us maybe you have a calculator somewhere or a pen and paper 42 times 360 sorry 42 uh, months uh, times 30 days per month is 1260 1260 mm-hmm. mm-hmm. now when we go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 14, uh, we find the woman, uh, this same woman, uh, was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. Again, so this is a repetition of what we find in verse 6. Mm-hmm. It says this woman uh, that she might uh, fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and half a time from the pre- from the face of a serpent. Now, throughout the scriptures, we know that times, when used in this sense, actually it means days, uh, years, sorry. And in fact, in other translations of the Bible, it is actually years. Uh, uh, we're just told a year times, which is two years, and half a year. So three and a half years. Again, if you do simple calculation, three and a half years, we know that there are 12 months. Uh, 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 in, in, in a year and 30 days, uh, mm-hmm. at least historically, that has um, uh, been constant in many, many cultures. A year has always uh, constantly, not always, but quite, quite constantly and very, with very repeated um, constancy, 360 days. Mm-hmm. So you multiply three and a half years by 360 days, you get 1,260 mm-hmm. days. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Daniel 7.25, we find, um, uh, and he shall speak great words. Again, this same power. This power, uh, we're told in Revelation, there's a power that has the body of a leopard, the mouth of a lion, and the feet of a bear. Take your time to study Daniel chapter 7. This, that's exactly the same power that's being described here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daniel chapter 7, again, verse 25, it says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Remember blasphemies in Revelation chapter 13? He shall speak great words against the Most High, shall wear out the sins of the Most High, uh, 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 and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time times and the dividing of time again time times and half a time Mm -hmm. which again we saw was 1260 days days. Mm -hmm. now again we are dealing with times of prophecy Mm -hmm. and prophetically uh if you go to ezekiel chapter 4 verse 6 numbers 14 34 you actually do find that a day represents a year Mm -hmm. so in truth this power this beast power will persecute god's people for 1260 years over one millennium Mm -hmm. the power will reign Mm -hmm. now last uh, week when we were studying part one of this uh, topic we had established that the power that is that speaks blasphemies the power that uh, uh, in general, uh, is identified as the beast power. We saw was none other than the church. The church that for a time was faithful, Mm -hmm. but then became unfaithful, committed spiritual adultery with the world, partaking of its rituals and its traditions. That medieval, that Roman church that uh, uh, had a man at its head, the Pope, that church was the beast power. And as we will actually see, uh, uh, this power is the power that persecuted God's people for mm-hmm. 1,260 years. In fact, if you go in, in, uh, in history, you'll find that that's exactly what happened. That from the year 
uh, 300, uh, 320, uh, Emperor Constantine moved his uh, the 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 center of Rome from uh, of, of the Roman Empire from Rome mm. to Constantinople, which was then called the New Rome. Mm. And there was like a power vacuum that was left there. Mm. And within that power vacuum, there was space given for the Bishop of Rome mm. to gain precedence mm -hmm. and, and authority. And then two centuries later, in 538, Emperor Justinian, who was reigning in Constantine, he gave official power to the Pope uh, to be the, the corrector of heretics, mm. the corrector of doctrine, and um, uh, 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 the, uh, they wouldn't use the word persecuting, but then they would use the word corrector of heretics. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. But you know, that's just a nice way of saying that they would be persecute mm -hmm. God's people. Mm -hmm. Because the heretic was the person, for instance, who would reject that, um, that Sunday is the Sabbath. Who would reject that we must bow down before Mary and before statues and things like that. Who would mm -hmm. reject these things? So unfortunately, that's exactly what happened in history. Mm -hmm. and, and this power arose in 538. And as we have just done this calculation and we have studied uh, um, from the Bible, this power would reign for 1,000 260 years mm. and its power would continue to grow and grow and grow as we saw the power was given from the from 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 the state so Emperor Justinian gave uh, the Pope this authority to persecute heretics. But there came a time, even in the 1000s, when the Pope that was reigning, the Pope whose name was Hildebrand, he even made an emperor kneel before him, his, his, his palace, and, 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 and seek penance because he had, uh, he had uh, done what the Pope felt was an insult. Yeah? And, and that is the great level of authority eventually that the popes were, 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 were wielding. Uh, it, it reached a, a, a very high peak when the pope uh, would claim to have authority even over the temporal, mm -hmm. um, over the kings, where he would um, set up kings, where he would raise up kings, where he would set up and uh, uh, take away kingdoms. When he just excommunicates somebody who is a king, all of a sudden all the princes under him uh, feel that they can now take over his, uh, his land. And so the pope was using that kind of cunning. He, he had no powers really, but he used that kind of cunning to control the land and also to persecute God's people. Um, uh, Romano, you actually gave us that description of, mm -hmm. of the Waldenses mm -hmm. who are persecuted mm -hmm. because they did not um, uh, uh, cling to what the church was holding mm -hmm. at that particular time. Mm -hmm. And at the very end of those three and a half years of Bible prophecy, uh, 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 from 538 to 1798, just like clockwork, uh, uh, this, the, the very same power that gave um, authority uh, to the church took it away. Um, uh, uh, that is, temporal power gave uh, 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 authority to the church. It took it away in 1798 when uh, uh, Bathier, who was a general of Napoleon, he uh, went into the palace and effectively, uh, you could say, shut down uh, uh, the papal power. At least, uh, in effect, inflicting a significant, significant wound. And, you know, like my mind is actually taken to a very interesting idea mm -hmm. that how long did Christ uh, minister? Three and a half? Three and a half, yes. years, actually. Yeah, so the <coughs> Antichrist mm. also ministers, in a sense, ministers, in a sweat, quote-unquote, for three and a half prophetic mm. years. Mm. So it's very interesting. And then the wound was, was, was inflicted in 1798. And then we are told in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 12, eventually that deadly wound is healed. We are told, Revelation, chapter 13, verse 12, um, he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That deadly wound was the wound that was inflicted in 1798 when the Pope's power was effectively taken from him. Mm -hmm. Even to this day, we, we know that the papacy has not that authority that it had mm -hmm. in the Middle Ages, you know, mm -hmm. when it could just uh, excommunicate an entire region mm -hmm. and, and, and prevent an entire region from, from having religious services. Mm -hmm. making and, and, and because the church had that level of authority at that time, people really felt that. Right mm -hmm. now, people don't feel it. Mm -hmm. But people really felt it at that time. So that level of authority doesn't exist right now because that wound was healed but we know that that wound is uh, the, uh, that wound was inflicted but we know that wound is being healed step by step mm. every single day mm. and and we know that eventually as prophecy tells us that wound will be fully and completely healed but we can have ha f uh, faith and hope as i said um uh, many times in the past lessons that all these things are given to us that we understand that God is with us and God is the mm. one to protect and preserve us despite mm -hmm. these challenges mm -hmm. that we will go through. Thank you. There's a lot of history and mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> Who 
people will know that in Sabbath school we'll be doing mathematics and history. But thank you so much, Zafet, for just taking us through that, the deadly wound. I'm just um, understand, like, as you were talking and even through just my study, I one thing that came out clearly is that this deadly wound, or rather, as you are studying through this lesson, we are not here to get discouraged. We are here to get prepared what is to happen. And then in Ecclesiastes says, when the preacher says in Ecclesiastes, Solomon, I mean, when he says that there is nothing new under the earth, like the devil is here. He's always doing the counterfeit. Uh, Jesus ministers for three and a half years, he says, oh, three and a half years. So I'll also come with my ministry for three and a half years. So I don't know what are your thoughts on the deadly wound, um, just, just in short. Um, I think two things. Mm. One, um, it is how it is inflicted mm. um, that we see a, a pope being taken into captivity. Mm. And therefore, it means that, um, and of course the Bible verse that um, he referenced, that he who leads into captivity mm -hmm. shall mm -hmm. be taken into, into captivity. captivity. And mm -hmm. it's interesting seeing that <coughs> also when God is inflicting judgment, because this is small judgments that God is passing upon mm. this, God also uses the same tools that these people have been using, the same way Christ um, warned Peter. You know, you... you if you if you kill by the sword, you shall die, die by, by the, the sword. sword. Mm -hmm. Similar principle mm -hmm. that's coming out here, mm -hmm. but it's it's also how the wound eventually heals. We know in these last days we are going to see it heal because the Bible has said that shall happen. Mm -hmm. But we know also as is with the physical, so is with the spiritual. Mm -hmm. A wound most of the time does not heal in the night. Mm -hmm. It takes time. It takes time. Slow progression, mm -hmm. and so we have been seeing. From the time the popes were led out of captivity, mm. when, they are, when they were eventually given their own city, their own country to rule, that their wound has been healing over time. Mm. Until to the very end, we are going to see the wound finally healed, and we are going to see them taking that authority as we are going to study on the Tuesday part in Revelation chapter 17. Mm. But before that, you can see all the influence. Right now, we are seeing with the papacy, mm. because the wound is healing. Mm. We can see all these kings and mm. queens bowing mm. and, and, and respecting its mm -hmm. authority mm -hmm. and everyone is standing, even on matters where they are not um, professionals. Oh, COVID is here. What does the Pope think? Mm. I mean, the Pope is not a doctor, mm. you know? Mm. Oh, climate change is here. What mm. does the Pope mm -hmm. think? Mm. The last I checked, the Pope is not an environmental scientist. Mm. Mm -hmm. But we keep turning to them as Every a voice of time. truth, as mm. a voice of guidance mm. in this day and age. And mm. we are respecting what, the voice, what that voice says mm. because the wound is indeed slowly healing. And the world is turning to that voice and listening to it slowly. Mm. So that by the time they take that authority, it will not be a matter of a surprise. We'll be like, oh, we've mm. been listening to this all along. Mm. So are we actually heeding to that voice today? Mm. Are we honoring that voice mm. today? Yeah, you know, you're just saying that, and I'm, I remember there's a time when the Pope was coming to Kenya, and I was in campus, <laughs> so he was to visit one of the campuses, and now there was just even competition. Mm. At, you know, he's visiting our campus, so our mm. campus is... is is in, in, on another level. It's not on the same level as yours. It's like people are very excited to know wh whose side mm. is the Pope on. Yeah, is he in good relationship with me? Yeah. So yeah, really, it's healing. Your thoughts? Mm, I agree with what uh, mm. with what uh, Jess has said, mm. as well as uh, what uh, Jeff has said. Uh, we see Pope Pius uh, dying in prison under the French Re uh, Revolution of that time. and um, But if, in as much as he died, the church still still remained. Mm. And over time, we saw, as just as referenced, uh, Mussolini eventually uh, granting uh, Vatican City um, autonomy from mm. the rest of Russia. Mm. And uh, we saw even uh, the Pope uh, working um, with various, even American presidents, to defeat uh, the... In, is credited with the um, as having a hand in the fall of the USSR and, and all the, and, and all those things and generally uh, we see uh, Catholicism and the institution of popery uh, coming at the forefront. Even uh, as just uh, referred to us uh, last time, 
even as champions of climate change, champions of uh, of family time, you know, of of of, of family togetherness and and. And, and champions of human rights and, 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 and such things. And so, um, indeed, gradually, slowly by slowly, uh, that wound is healing. Mm. Uh, he's uh, recognized as a political figure. He's recognized as a religious figure. Mm. He's, uh, he's revered um, and, uh, by all. And uh, generally, in essence, it is almost true uh, that the, the whole world is wandering after the beast. Mm. But... Um, they, that scriptural fulfillment of the wound being completely healed has not yet uh, been achieved. But mm. we can't say that the wound is healing. Mm. The wound is healing. And so we're not ex exactly at uh, the time where people are receiving the mark of the beast. Mm. But I think we shall see, we shall see that as we continue with the, with the lesson. Uh, though uh, it is mark of the beast time. Mm. We're around that time, but uh, it's not exactly that time also. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll read from the book of 1 <coughs> Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 and up to 4. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own concerns, um, seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is, if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. I'm really interested in verse 1 and verse 2 of that book and just our title of Monday, The Falling Away. And also Paul uh, has these verses in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, uh, 4, 9, all the way to 12. He predicts about the last days, the identifying marks that he gives to the beast and the Antichrist power. So just please talk to us about Monday and the following away, the last days that we are told by Paul. Yes, um, I want to give my comments right after Raphael gives um, his comments on the Monday part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. So the falling away. Yes, the All falling right. away. So the falling away. Uh, we, we are told uh, from the book of Second Thessalonians, chapter two, verse three and four. And uh, in essence, uh, Scripture is telling us, uh, like, what Daniel said, what Paul said, what what John, what John. So all these things are almost in harmony. Mm. There is uh, a congruency that 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 we cannot but help uh, uh, to note and also to to pay attention to. Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse three and four says, uh, Paul writing says, "Let no man deceive you by any means, for mm. that day shall not come." Mm. Which day is this? The day of our Lord. Mm. Uh, uh, he was he was he was talking to them about. Uh, about the second, the second coming, and some of the events that would uh, that would uh, would would, uh, would would must needs happen before the second coming, and he tells them that that day will not come, except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, and or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Mm -hmm. Paul tells us of a time uh, that indeed one who would, would break uh, from the... You see, he, say, he, he speaks about a falling away. Mm -hmm. You can only fall if you were once standing. Mm -hmm. In fact, in, other, in, in our previous lessons, we read about Babylon. And the message uh, is that Babylon is fallen, mm -hmm. is fallen. Mm -hmm. Telling us that Babylon at one point was standing. Babylon was, 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 in, was in good standing. In mm -hmm. fact, the, the fact that we, we saw how a good church is referred to as a virgin, and, but a church that has left her husband, her first husband, her, her true calling, is referred to as a harlot. Mm -hmm. So at one point, this, uh, this institution uh, led uh, by this, uh, this figure was standing. But eventually we see there is a falling, a falling away. And then subsequently, uh, the in intentions of this institution, the intentions of, of, of its leaders, of this organization, mm -hmm. are actually revealed. Mm -hmm. The Bible records that uh, the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Mm -hmm. Who does what? Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God? Mm -hmm. You see, in essence, um, we have uh, read about um, some of the 
practices of Catholicism and of popery, um, and how we read in the previous uh, in the previous lesson how they say that they hold on this earth the very place of God, mm. um, how they have taken upon themselves the mandate to pray uh, through intercessors, mm. and how. There's actually a whole church process in which one can be made a saint, mm -hmm. you know. Yet, yet scripture says that all of us are saints and mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. of the Most High mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there are all these um, relics, all these teachings about Sunday sacredness and, mm -hmm. and, and the immortality of the soul, mm -hmm. all mingled mm -hmm. uh, towards um, allowing us, uh, a, 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 allowing a system in which, um, in which uh, people can pray to the dead and through the dead, mm. we see people praying through Mary, mm. through Saint Peter, and mm -hmm. through all all other um, all other things. And so we see generally a system that indeed does oppose God and ex exalts itself above all that is called God, mm. and that is worshipped. Indeed, it interferes with the true way of worship that God has instituted, so that He, as God, seated on the temple of God, mm -hmm. showing himself that he is God. And then in verse 9 to 12, uh, Paul continues and says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, mm -hmm. and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they have not received the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they may believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Paul is speaking and says, indeed, we can identify uh, the beast. We see he falls away, meaning uh, at one point they were standing. We see they are opposing and uh, and, and exalting themselves above the, above the things of God and even interfering with the worship services. Mm -hmm. We see the aspect of all power and signs and lying wonders. Satan. They're working with Satan. And we saw the same thing that the dragon gave him, his mm -hmm. seat and great power mm -hmm. and authority. Mm -hmm. And so uh, scripture... It, Almost, it's, a, it's, a, it's as if it's a lesson that God really wants us to understand. He mm. repeats it. And I find that Paul puts it in very simple language. As in, it's very clear. You don't have to decode all these things. Mm. And so we see, do we see signs and wonders happening? Mm. We've seen stigmata. We've seen Mary appearing. Mm. We've seen uh, people coming up with all minor, manner of dreams. Mm. All, all of which uh, pegged also on the same issue of mm. the immortality mm. of the soul. Mm. The immortality of the soul. Mm. And so even as we consider um, how the whole world will wander after the beast, then we know for a fact it will be through signs and wonders will be one of the great uh, things that they will use mm. to True. win over converts, to win mm. over people who are even atheists, who are even Muslims and Hindus. Mm. And all this has been depicted um, in accordance to, way, to the way um, scripture, scripture has, has, has spoken to us. Um, in other places, he, the beast of Revelation 13 and 14 is referred to as the lawless one, mm. meaning they have... <clears throat> They have no regard for the law of God. Mm. We look at the Ten Commandments. We see mm. the Second Commandment, mm. that where, which says expressly mm. that you shall not no do idols. it. You shall not mm. worship God through the form of idols. Mm. Not even just worshiping idols, no. Mm. God does say don't make any representation of himself and mm. say that you are worshiping him through that. Mm -hmm. He says there is no mediator with, uh, with, with him except mm. Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. our Lord and our Savior. Mm. And so we see that in the Roman Bible, in some Bibles, they have actually removed the second commandment. Mm. They have actually removed the second commandment. And then the fourth commandment, which speaks about the Sabbath day, mm. they've actually been shown, they've shortened it, you know. And so we, we see all these changes, all these changes, which had hitherto been uh, long before uh, predicted by Bible scripture, by Bible prophecy. And, uh, and so um, the SD Bible commentary states it this way. A comparison with Daniel's prophecy of the blasphemous power that succeeds the, that of pagan Rome mm. and with John's word, mm. picture of the leopard-like beast, reveals many similarities between the three descriptions of the little horn, the beast's power, and the lawless one. This leads us to the conclusion that Daniel, Paul, and John are speaking of the same power, mm. which is the papacy. Mm. And so, basically, uh, for the dear viewer, we need to understand uh, that indeed Bible prophecy has been fulfilled and is being fulfilled um, uh, before our, our, our very eyes. And we're living in a time in which we are called 
to make decisions. Mm. How are we mm. worshipping? Mm. Are we worshipping um, uh, in, in the manner in which Paul says that there are others who have, uh, who have refused, rejecting the truth, rejecting the true Sabbath, rejecting the truth about the immortality of the soul, uh, uh, the state of the dead, rejecting truths about idol worship, rejecting these truths. It says, indeed, with all deceivableness of, un of unrighteousness in mm. them that perish. Are we those who perish? Hmm? Because we have not received a love mm. of the truth. truth. Oh, the, truth. Mm. the love of the truth is that which will help us in order to avoid the falling away. In order to avoid the falling away. And in the Bible continues and says, and for this cause God shall send them a strong, strong delusion. delusion. Mm. I think it is a delusion when a man can think that he is God. Mm. Indeed, even in the very institution itself, the popes die. Mm. And the and new ones are elected, mm. and even even in the whole in the organization itself, there are lo there are a lot of there's a lot of politics that goes on. Mm. Not that there are no poli there's no politics in our, every other church, uh, but indeed it must really be a strong delusion to think that you can hold the mm. place of God here mm. or not. To think that a man can change the Sabbath day mm -hmm. by your own power and, and, and by your own authority. Mm. Indeed, the question for all of us is: Do we have a love of the truth? And this, because this is the only thing that will prevent us from falling away. Yeah. Before falling, falling away, it means you are standing. So where are you? Are you falling away from, the, from God, from the grace of God? Or really, where just are you? Where, where, is your, where does your allegiance lie? Where, who do you worship? Is it the true of, truth of God? Or where, where are you really? So just as you're giving us the Monday your comments on Monday part, please press it to the Tuesday part. All right. Mm. Um, you know, when, you, when we think about um, mm. the falling away mm. and how we look at the purpose and its mm. role in these last days, sometimes we, are, we may be tempted to think, oh my goodness, I, I don't give indulgences. I don't, I don't mm. pray to Mary. I don't believe that the dead are not dead. I don't mm. believe in purgatory. Mm. We might think that I don't fall into that category. I go to church on Sabbath. I go to church on Sabbath. Mm. But when Paul is talking about the falling away, he's speaking about true Christians who believed in the truth, mm. deciding to walk away from that mm -hmm. truth. And they gain, they, they start having sympathies with the man of sin, such mm. that when the man of sin is fully revealed, they have sympathized with him and it is easy to follow mm. him. And that falling away is from the doctrines and the truth we hold today, the simple truths you hold today. Mm. You may not be um, um, praying to Mary, mm. but are you faithful to keeping that Sabbath? Mm. Are you faithful to the light that has been revealed mm. in the Ten Commandments mm. of God? Mm. Or are you slowly saying, ah, that is just being too strict. Ah, mm. when I do that, I'll just, that's being legalistic. Mm. I mean, we don't have to be that strict. Mm. And slowly, we start gaining sympathies with Rome. Uh, um, Ellen White says that, um, a quotation in the book, Great Controversy, I forget the page, but she says that the, 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 the papacy, it's like a chameleon. Mm. It, it changes color Every depending time. on the situation, mm. depending on where it is. It mm. keeps changing its color. So I believe that in the last days, I know we are going to say as I go into the last part, into the Tuesday part, in these last days, it may not be guys come and buy indulgences. Mm -mm. He's going to change his color to suit the needs of the people, to suit what you are listening to, what you, what you like today, what you want to hear. He will come to you so that you can gain sympathies with him and you'll be like, but he fits everything else. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, let's not judge people. Homosexuality, honestly, let's just let's let be people, open -minded. let's be open-minded. <laughs> you know, he looks like he's preaching a lot of peace mm -hmm. and a lot of love. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just this Sunday thing. Yes, it's true, I believe the Sabbath, mm. but he, he fits it. Mm. And so when you are compelled at the very end, you will find yourself even worshipping on, on that Sunday. Mm. Because slowly you've been falling away. Your own spiritual condition, slowly, you slowly. stop doing your devotions. Mm. You, you don't now believe the truth that mm. we believe. And then you gain sympathies mm. with Rome. Mm. And how is he going to actually how is the beast power going to take mm. full control? How is he going to have this authority? The book of Revelation chapter 17, I will just read briefly and compare it to what happens in Daniel. Revelation chapter 17, um, it tells us, 
Uh, I'm reading um, from verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. That at the same time the beast is receiving great authority over the whole earth. Then we see ten kings mm. in the world receiving power as though forming a union, a one world power mm. of the beast and these other kingdoms ruling the whole world. In verse 13 we are told that they will have one mind and they will give power and strength to the beast. What mm. shall they do? They will make war with, with the, the lamb, lamb. Mm. and the lamb shall overcome them. For the, he is the Lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen mm. and faithful. Amen. Daniel puts it a little bit different when this beast power is forming and gives us a few more details that will help me explain the Tuesday part. Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter 8, in, from verse 23, but Daniel says this, and in the latter time, speaking of the same beast, he says, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come, I'm reading chapter 8, verse 23, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance, this is that same beast, and understanding dark sentences shall stand up. Mm -hmm. And his power shall be not small but mighty. Mm -hmm. But not by his own power. Mm -hmm. Why? One, we have been told, we last said it last time, that he receives power from the dragon, mm -hmm. from Satan himself. Mm -hmm. But we also see him receiving power from these other ten kingdoms. Mm -hmm. He does not have power from, by himself. Mm -hmm. The states gives him power. Mm. So two things. There's the power from the dragon and there's the power from, from the, the state, state. Mm -hmm. by his own power, no, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and shall practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. The mighty and the holy people here are the Christians. Mm. Verse 25 says, and through his policy, also, he shall cause craft, you know, craft is someone very cunning. Mm. He, he will be very cunning. He shall cause craft to prosper in his hand mm. and he shall magnify himself in his heart. The, the man of sin, as we <laughs> saw in Second Thessalonians, mm. he shall lift up himself and by peace, he will not be preaching. Let us make war. Mm -mm. He will say peace. We know the Bible tells us that when you shall hear peace, peace and, and safety, safety. Mm -hmm. then sudden destruction shall, shall come. come. Mm -hmm. And by peace he shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. John said it differently. He said that he will make war with the lamb. Mm -hmm. This is the prince of princes. He will make war with Christ. But he shall be broken. But we are told Christ will overcome. The Lamb will overcome Amen. him. Amen. You know, th this beast power does not work as he worked in the past. As we mm. said, he's like a chameleon. He changes as he seems, uh, as the world seems fit. He will be making war through peace, through craft. You know, and and we look at the purpose he's working today, and everything they are preaching. You know, sometimes I even look at it. I'm like. You know, it is not so wrong for us to have all this peace they are saying. You know, we need to have healing in the world. Yeah. You know, we need to have um, um, a world that is united. Mm. Who doesn't want that? Mm. I sincerely mm. desire that. Mm. But I know it is going to come in the world to come, not in this world. Mm. They are telling us, let us preserve the environment so that we, we can live longer here. But mm. we don't want to live longer here in this earth. We know it's going to degrade. Mm. And this earth is like a garment that is tearing away and is wearing out mm. but why are we making this planet to be a better place for us mm. we want to have the earth to come not this one they are working this craft prospering in their hand and that's how they worked in the past mm. they worked in the past to unite the world you know the lesson told us how Constant, Constantine, the state, worked with the, the, the Roman church then 
to unite the world not with the truth mm -hmm. but by mixing tradition of the pagan churches mm -hmm. and the true christian church mm -hmm. a unity that came through craft mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. through the law not through the truth of the word of god and even today a unity will be sought by the same power mm -hmm. not through the truth of the word of god but by through craft by preaching peace by being cunning and we end up believing it is not so bad after all mm -hmm. but which unity are we seeking today is it the unity of the truth because satan's final strategy will be to have this one world power mm. that will unite the world against the people of god mm. but the f uh, encouragement we are given is this and i love it that he will make war with the prince of princes mm. but he will be cut off mm. without hand Amen. he will make war mm. with the lamb, lamb. Yeah. but mm. he will not prosper the he, lamb will overcome he will overcome mm -hmm. and you are told those who are with the lamb mm -hmm. will also overcome Amen. you know Amen. the bible in the book of um, um isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 tells us that even though you walk through the rivers they will not overflow you even mm -hmm. though you walk through the fire you will not be burned christ encouraged us in matthew chapter 10 verse mm -hmm. 20 it says do not fear even those times when you shall see him rising up and wanting to destroy you just fear the one who can destroy the soul and the body he will not prosper because he cannot destroy your soul he only has power to destroy the body mm. not the soul if you hold on to the truth of the word of god today amen amen, amen. and the lesson writer says at a time of great crisis when the world is scared hurting and fearful People will be desperate for someone to bring stability and protection. This is how tyranny has risen in the past, and there is no reason to think that it could not happen again. According to prophecy, something will bring about this pro this final mm. event. Something will bring about. True. You know, when COVID happened, people thought, this is it, this is it, and we were all, all over the place just reading the Bible. But as we do not know the times, but we are surely headed there because the signs are all over the place and they are just leading us there. Um, uh, Japheth, as you're giving us your comments, just really brief comments on Tuesday, Saturn's final strategies, please lead us to the mark of the beast. Oh, thank you so much. Mm. Thanks. So, uh, uh, indeed, the enemy's uh, strategy has always been mm. either to destroy mm. uh, the, tr the, the truth mm. or to corrupt it. Mm. So, either through uh, to destroy Abel or to corrupt Cain. Mm. Unfortunately, doing both of them. Mm. But then the truth would always prosper, mm. even beyond that. Mm. Because we just read that text in Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. Mm. We, told, we said that the, 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 the church, uh, that system, that global power mm. will try and war against Jesus Christ. Mm. They don't realize they're warring against Jesus Christ. Mm. It's the same way in Acts chapter 9, we find that Paul was warring against the church, the church mm. but he didn't know mm. he was warring against Jesus Christ. Mm. When Christ said, why are you persecuting me? me. It mm. became clear that mm. uh, they were warring against Jesus Christ. Mm. And that is unfortunately Satan's tactic. Sometimes you and I can be even pulled without realizing mm. it into doing that. Mm. And you should be very, very wary mm. never to engage in the work mm. of the enemy. Mm. And the work of the enemy culminates in its highest point in the establishment of the mark of the of beast. The beast. Mm. And um, throughout the Bible, especially the book of Revelation, you find these two, like two systems that are opposed to each other. We discussed previously the woman of Revelation 12, mm. woman of Revelation 17. Mm. Yeah, We discussed uh, 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 the, uh, the dragon and the 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 man child who has a, a, a rod of iron, mm. Revelation 12. Mm. So that's Jesus Christ versus Satan. And here we find two things that are, they seem very similar, but they are distinctly opposite from each other. The mark of the beast and the seal of God. Now, uh, the text you read for us in Revelation chapter four, uh, chapter 7 mm. uh, really helps us set uh, the stage and helps us understand what the mark of the beast is. Because honestly, this is just something you can do for yourself. Just go online and ask yourself, what do people 
people think the mark of the beast is. Uh, it is. It ranges for so many things. Mm. Sometimes it always coincides with some new form of technology. Mm. There was a time when barcodes became a new thing. You know, very convenient means that people who are um, uh, in commerce they used to identify their products. You know, they said no, the mark of the beast is six 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 because occasionally, you know, because there are so many. You know, there are nine. There are ten digits, zero mm. to nine. Mm. And occasionally, uh, if a barcode has like twenty digits, you can expect six six and six to pop yeah, up. So yeah, so we'll see that side of all. Yo, that product, <laughs> uh, yo, that that jam. No, ingredient yeah, yeso that has seven seven seven. I want to buy that one. Mm. See that, that's you see that, that that is not the biblical way of understanding what mm. the mark of the beast is mm. because uh, it is connected with what the, the idea of what the seal of God is. Uh, in the book of Revelation, chapter seven. Um, uh, Revelation chapter 7, we saw, I saw another angel descending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, until we have sealed the servants of God in where? In their the foreheads. foreheads. Now, if you turn to Revelation chapter 13, and, 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 and inquire with regard to the mark of the beast. We find here, uh, Revelation 13 verse 16, it says, And he, this is a power that is working for the papacy, the beast power. Mm -hmm. It says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand or mm -hmm. in Fine. their forehead. Mm -hmm. So you can see th that comparison. One, the seal of God placed where? in the forehead, mm -hmm. another, the mark of the beast placed where? In the, the hand, hand or in the forehead. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the seal of God? You know, mm -hmm. uh, if the mark of the beast, let's say, is a chip, mm -hmm. is the seal of God a chip that angels put on a forehead? No, it cannot be. Mm -hmm. The seal of God is what we can find within the scriptures. Mm -hmm. uh, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 8, this is um, a, a, a summary, a summary from Moses of all the commands that God had been giving the Israelites throughout their sojournings um, in the wilderness. Uh, this is um, one part of those messages. Deuteronomy 6, verse 8, we find uh, a, a, a verse, from verse 6, it says, these words that I command, these words, all of the wonderful commands and messages from God, all the commandments that God has a desire for us to keep, that we may be holy. These words, I repeat, which I command thee this day, Shall, shall be in thine heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Verse mm -hmm. 7. Thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, when thou risest up. And then verse 8 is the clincher. It says, And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be frontlets between thine eyes. So there mm -hmm. is a seal that is placed of the law of God. Where? In the hand. And in the forehead, not or. Mm. Uh, note that in Revelation chapter 13, the mark of the beast is placed in the hand or the in the forehead. forehead. Yes. Mm. And what does it mean that the seal of God is placed in the hand and in the forehead? It means that you are obedient in action mm. and obedient in thoughts. In fact, that's why when you go to the seal of God in Revelation chapter 7, it is only placed in the forehead. Mm. Why is that? If it is in your mind, it is everywhere. Mm. If it is in your mind, it is in your hand also. Mm. It is in your feet. Mm. It is in your mouth. It is in your ear. It is in your eyes. Because in everything that you do, where you walk, where you handle, what you see, what you hear, what you say, all those things shall be marked by, by obedience to God, Amen. by obedience, Amen. by being righteous and being, uh, being a follower of, mm. of Jesus Christ. Mm. And that is why also in the book of Ephesians, we are told, um, chapter 4, uh, uh, where Paul says, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the one that really impresses it in our minds, mm. obedience to the law of God. Impresses, he's the one who makes it really a part of who you are. So that really you can say that I'm obedient to God's Ten Commandments. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is constantly guiding me, mm. constantly enabling me to do his will. On the other hand, the mark of the beast is placed only where? In the forehead or in the hand. That means that those ones who are going to obey the system in the end, the ones that um, uh, Jess, Raphael, and Ramon have been discussing here, those people, some of them will not actually believe. Mm. Some of them will not actually believe. They will just go along with it. So it will be in their hand. 
They will, they will, they will be told you go, they will go. They will mm. be told you come, they mm. will come. Mm. They will be told you do this, they will do this. And they will be told violate the Sabbath, which is the, the, the apex, the peak of the seal of God, the, uh, in obedience to God's Ten Commandments, because it is the one where, uh, in very many lessons, I think maybe four or five lessons ago, we established that that seal is, is, is especially in the Sabbath. Um, in Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 20, Ezekiel 20, verse 8, uh, 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 You'll be told, violate the Sabbath and do something else and do not keep the Sabbath day and they will do it. And at that point, the seal of God uh, it cannot be placed upon somebody who is disobedient. On the other hand, they are receiving the mark of the beast step by step. Mm -hmm. And that is the fearful thing that um, uh, God tells us will happen in the last days. Mm -hmm. That if we are not careful... If we do not have a constant desire to honor and obey God's Ten Commandment law, especially in the keeping of the seventh day Sabbath, then we will receive the mark of the beast at a time when that law is being enforced. Not mm -hmm. right now. We cannot say right now that mm -hmm. people are receiving the mm -hmm. mark of the beast mm -hmm. because it has not been enforced. Uh, it, it's because clearly in Revelation chapter 13 there is a decree that goes mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. So it has not been enforced. But at that particular time, you will, unfortunately, if you have not been constantly, day by day, walking with Jesus, obey, in obedience to his will, then eventually, uh, once it becomes a challenge, once the, the trials really enter into that particular space, then it becomes very difficult and many people will forsake, even those who know it is true, will forsake and they will have the mark of the beast in their hand. Others mm -hmm. will believe. Others will have the mark in the forehead. They will believe the lies of the enemy. Mm. Others will just go along with it because of convenience. Oh, my dear brother, my dear sister who is viewing, let us not be such as would walk in this way. Mm. The ones who Paul calls cast, are cast away. Mm. Let us all stand for what is true. Mm. And so that when the time of trouble, the difficult times come, then you can stand for, the, for, for what is right. Because right now, when it is easy, you're able to stand for what is true and day by day you've been walking with Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. My question to you, my dear brother or sister, even a question to myself is, where is my character? Have I been transformed? That is really what I'd ask us on the Tuesday part, the, on the Wednesday part, sorry, the mark of the beast. Uh, time is really, really not on our side, so we'll just go through Thursday, Thursday um, to my panelists. That is just and Raphael, who have not commented on the Wednesday part, Mark of the Beast. As you give your comment on Thursday, please also just accompany them with what you think on the Mark of the Beast. But the Sabbath test, what is really, really this Sabbath test? Because it is a command given to us in the book of Exodus. Thou shalt keep the Sabbath day holy. And it explains to us how we should keep. Even the servant in your house should not work. We have studied that. I know it is just a reminder to us. But there is a test that is coming. The Sabbath test. Starting with you, Jess. The Sabbath test. What do you think? What are your comments on it? Actually, um, I, I realize uh, Japheth has covered what the exactly. Sabbath and, mm. and, and that it's, it is actually the seal of God and mm. what it means. Mm. But just a small comment on w why the Sabbath. Mm. You know, beyond it being the only law among the Ten Commandments mm. that recognizes that it is God himself speaking and the significance of, his, uh, uh, significance of it. In, the, in a previous lesson, we studied about the Sabbath being that sign. Mm. And you know, it's beyond the sign of, uh, it's the sign which God says, it is the sign between me, me and, and you, you to know mm. that I am your people. Mm. And this sign, when he's speaking about it in the book of Ezekiel, he, he says, he gives it to them where after he has married them, mm. after he has entered into mm. this covenant mm. with mm. them. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's like in the, in the marriage ceremony, in the seven the Adventists, we don't usually do this, but there are cultures that actually do this, that after you have married someone, there's a sign that this person belongs to you. Mm. People, some people give a ring, some people put a sign here mm. on, on, the, on the forehead, mm. a mark, to mm. show that this person is, is actually married, married to another person, mm. and they belong to another person. Mm. That Sabbath um, test, it is our test of faithfulness to 
to the one we are married to. Amen. It is to check whether are you married to your husband or are you or are you not married to your husband. Amen. It is like that ring God has put on you. So it is very intimate. It is a loving thing given after a marriage covenant with Amen. God. And the test of faithfulness, it is whether you're still faithful to your marriage vows. Are you still faithful to your mm. marriage vows? And that's what God is asking us at the very end when he's testing us with the Sabbath. I married you and I gave you a clothing, something to remind you, which was the Sabbath. Are you still faithful to the covenant that I entered into with you? Mm. Thank you. Oh, sure. Yes, with regard to the Sabbath test, um, mm -hmm. in fact, there was actually um, a point that I, would, I had forgotten to note. Um, with regard to the beast itself, the power that you've been describing, the, the, the people power, identifying what its mark is. Uh, there is um, there's an article uh, that is found in the American Catholic Quarterly Review, January 1883. Uh, it says, of course, the Catholic, uh, the Catholic Church claims that the change, this is when the church changed the Sabbath to from Sunday. Saturday to Sunday. Mm -hmm. The change is an act, uh, was her act, and the act was a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters. Also, if you have your, uh, um, a catechism, and you go in the section where they're describing the church's capacity and power to establish days, holy days. And it is normally uh, highlighted there. Why does the church have this power to establish special days like Lent, etc., etc.? And the answer is because the church was given this authority from the power to change the Sabbath. So um, uh, it, it, it is clear for us that even the beast identifies itself that this is my mark. Mm. And on the other hand, God himself identifies the Sabbath is my seal. Mm. And God wants us to, 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 to honor the Sabbath, not just in a hypocritical way. Do you know that, for instance, that the Jews were trying to kill Christ quickly on Friday afternoon so that they could keep the Sabbath? <laughs> that is not Sabbath keeping. That is not that is that mm. There is no obedience of God's law there. Mm. The, God wants us to keep God's law in its entirety. Mm. How? By being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why I had to uh, emphasize that the Holy Spirit is a, a crucial part of the seal of God. That without the Holy Spirit, we cannot be sealed. Mm. And the Holy Spirit seals the law within our hearts. So therefore, we should ask day by day mm -hmm. for the Holy Spirit that he may um, work within us the will of God in our lives. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Raphael? Uh, indeed, uh, uh, indeed uh, uh, it's an interesting uh, study that we are going through. Um, about the mark of the beast and the seal of God. As Japheth has told us, um, we've seen many movies and we've seen many theories about who the Antichrist is mm. and all these things, you know, about chips, about barcodes, about tracking devices, mm. about, um, um, about many, many things. And, 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 and uh, we've been sensationalized. But... One thing we will realize that the problem with our generation or with our time is uh, that we do not read. That history is rich with uh, men and women who in the past knew who the Antichrist power is. Mm. Men and women who knew uh, what are some of the issues in society. We are told even people like Isaac Newton mm. were well versant with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. Mm. And for a long time, for a long time, during the period uh, when uh, when the wound was still fresh, um, paper, the papacy in and of itself was rejected in many places, mm. in many places, and, and, and it was just uh, uh, sort of uh, localized in Rome. But over time, as, as the wound has healed, we see the papacy and its systems and its teaching percolating and permeating throughout society, mm. and they've become really acceptable. Mm. And as a result, also, I think there have been efforts to hide and bury the truth. But yet we see the truth is always triumphant. Mm. Truth never dies. Mm. Truth never dies. And so um, the question to us, dear viewer, is do we have a loving of the truth of the truth or do we, will we always fall back on the traditions and the teachings of men? Our fathers and our mothers may have followed a particular route, but to us today, to whom this light is coming, uh, we are being called uh, Revelation 18 and verse 4, and where God says, come out of her, my people. Mm. God knows he has got his people. In fact, in another place he says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. knowledge. But that text 
continues further and says, because you have rejected what? Knowledge. Knowledge. Mm. Therefore, God himself will reject him. True. So the question is, whenever truth comes to you, what is your reaction? Mm. What is your reaction? Mm. Do you uh, humbly investigate the matter? Mm. Or do you simply react and reject it completely because it casts against the grain of everything mm. that you've known? Mm. It casts against the grain of, uh, of all the, the systems in which you have been brought up in. I'm not saying Catholics are bad people. No, There are some really nice people. They run schools. They run hospitals. Mm. But at the end of the day, what matters is, do we have a love of the truth? Do we have a love of the things of God and the things that God has done for us, of his salvation, of, 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 um, of him being our creator and our mm. redeemer? Mm. And all of these things, uh, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12 and verse, uh, verse 20, tell us to hallow his Sabbaths. To hallow his Sabbaths. As Isaiah 58 says, if we put... If you keep our feet from violating his Sabbath, you know, therefore God will bless us with health. He'll bless us with many things. And so, as, a, as we are considering uh, this particular lesson, um, the question to us today is, what is our attitude uh, when we receive truth? We are told about the Sabbath test. Not that the Sabbath has ever been a test, mm. no. It is only that scripture tells us and prophecy tells us that a time is coming when those who keep the sabbath will be persecuted mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. there there and then then the sabbath becomes a test mm -hmm. a test in that will you stand for truth mm -hmm. or will you uh for the sake of comforts for the for you to be able to buy and sell mm -hmm. for you to be able to transact and to and to, to have a comfortable life mm -hmm. um compromise and so then and then the Sabbath now becomes a test. The mm -hmm. Sabbath becomes a test. But to keep the Sabbath is not difficult. To keep the Sabbath is not difficult. We only simply need to know the Lord of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And Amen. to also know that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Amen. 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 Thank you. It's been a wonderful study. The seal of God and mark of the beast. If you're joining us for the first time and you've heard us talk about Catholic pop and you feel like, ah, uh -uh, this is not the place I want to be. This is, you feel like we, we have been, we have come out so strong on you. It's not that way. Bible prophecy is not meant to scare you away. Bible prophecy is meant to prepare you. This study is actually meant to prepare you for the things to come. And it is a matter of life and death. It is a matter of you making a decision. And just through the lesson, I'll, I'll pick up some things and say, the seventh day, is, seventh day Sabbath is a test for God's people. Those who will receive the seal of God are those who will keep the fourth of commandment faithfully the seal is the sign of sanctification because sabbath is the day that the lord sanctified it is the day that we should receive sanctification the seal is given to the remnant the seal is given to those who represent christ it is not about who went when you went to church or where you are born or who you are it is given to those that represent christ the seal is given to those who confess their own sins and the sins of others because you are told somewhere in Ezekiel that if uh, you see someone sitting, I'm just paraphrasing, and you let them just die in their sin, that blood is where on your hand. So you, it means that that is why we are telling you, that is why we are boldly speaking and saying that Sabbath is on Saturday or not Sunday. And that is why we are speaking about the evils that will happen and who about the Antichrist, because we do not want that blood on our hands. <laughs> and then the seal is given to, is, is a mark of protection, just like it happened during Moses' time. They had to, uh, what do I say, paint blood on their doorposts to be protected from the angel of death. That is the same thing the seal does to us, because judgment is coming and it will befall on the wicked people. We are to be filled with the Holy Spirit, like Japheth told us, so that we can be able to understand the times and be able to stay within the confines of the Lord. Amen. We are not forced to make this decision. Like Joshua said in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, as for him and his house, he will do what? He will serve, what? He will serve the Lord. Mm. What about you? Amen. We are called to make that decision now, not tomorrow. Now, 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 because times are not there for us. Amen. Just please cl close for us with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to study today. 
thank you for the warning of love that we need to prepare today and strengthen our faith. Oh, Father, we pray that you strengthen our little faith, that we may continually trust in you so that we may not walk away from the law of God, so that we may not walk away from the truth that has been revealed to us, that our faith will be so strengthened that we shall stand the times that are to come, the difficult times ahead. We pray for any viewer who's watching that may be struggling with some truths revealed here today or some truths you have convicted them um, separately through your Holy Spirit. I pray that strength and power shall be given to them to overcome. I pray that your ministering angels will come to them and guide them on the way that is narrow, on the way of faithfulness. Continue guiding us as we seek after you. It is our prayer, trusting and believing in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.